And walking back to talk to me with the coach, Mike Reed Maiden, as I'm visiting with Mark DeRosa, Cleveland Indians. Yeah. Well, a little different, huh? It's a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure reach a young audience, and most young ball players have that ambition of playing Major League Baseball. So you've been around with a number of teams. What has been the key to your success? Uh, being a coachable guy, I think, is one. Uh, being a team player. Mm -hmm. Uh, put my personal statistics uh, aside, knowing they'll they'll be there if I if I play play to win and play play as a as part of a, a cohesive team. And I always felt that I was coachable and, and, and can move around the diamond and and anything to get my name in the lineup. To be honest with you, I just want four chances to hit a ball out of the park. <laughs> And as I say, my show reach a young audience. I used to coach college ball and I scouted for five major league teams. And when I see kids that uh, have that ambitions of playing ball, major league ball, I always tell them if you hit, they'll find some place for you to play. And sound like that's been your your history. That that is definitely that is definitely the case. I was a guy who had to to work extremely hard offensively to to get to the point in my career where I feel comfortable. But if if they hit, if you hit, they will find a position for you. And I, I've I found myself coming up as a shortstop and have played right field, left field, and, and all over the diamond. So uh, I think the options that, that a versatile guy brings to a, to a coaching staff and a team allows them to play a lot more. So what would you say to that young ball player that looks at you and idolizes you and say, Mark DeRose is my idol? I would say <laughs> thank you very much. I, never, I don't view myself on, on that platform. But uh, I, I like to believe I do things the right way and that I appreciate and respect the game and the people that have come before me, and I, I, I try and play the game hard. So what's it like being out in the streets and people recognize you and all of a sudden 100 kids run up to you for your autograph? I have no problem with the kids. It's the adults. <laughs> the kids is what, you know, I remember... Uh, you know, myself as, as a young kid waiting outside Yankee Stadium trying to just get a glimpse of Don Mattingly or Dave Winfield or Ricky Henderson, whoever, whoever it may be. So, You're making uh, me feel old now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things I understand. So when, they, when the kids are around, uh, I, I, yeah. you know, you love interacting with them. Yeah. You know, when I was coaching ball, I would always tell my kids, I said, y'all don't understand what it's like for Major League players. They play a night game, they fly into a city three, four o'clock in the morning, they get in, jet lag and fans chasing them for autographs. You have no private life if you're a superstar. So to that youngster out there, tell them, is it really worth being a Major League player? It's 100% <laughs> worth it. Um, I mean, those, those are, you know, obviously when, when you go to certain cities, you always seem to have family members creep up and, and people that want to come to the game. but. Uh, it, it, it's tough in, in, in some regards, in some aspects, to travel, being away from family, being away from your kids is not always easy, but, but at the same time, it's a, it's a short-lived career yeah. and, uh, you know, not something that, that, that you can do much past 45 now. A lot of guys are playing, playing uh, into their 40s, so uh, it's short-lived and, and, and you have plenty of time to catch up. You played for a few teams over your major league career. How much of a transition is that to get used to new teams, new cities, new fans? It's, it's a big transition. As far as going into the clubhouse, I mean, I've been around the game long enough where I kind of got a, a feel for certain personalities and have played, whether it be on previous teams or, or winter league teams, with usually one or two guys from every team. So I'm pretty familiar in that, in that arena going into a clubhouse. As far as getting to know a city and, and a fan base, that, that makes it difficult. I'm sure you get lost a lot when you leave outside the stadium. Yeah, you better you better have a <laughs> GPS system with you. Uh, as far as all you know, usually all I ever know is how to get to the field and where a couple restaurants are to eat. All right, let, let me take you back a little bit. When you first got that call as you were coming to the big leagues, what was that feeling like? Where and when was that first of all? Yeah, it was in it was in 1998. I was in. Uh, playing the Carolina Mudcats in AA and, and was told by our AA manager that I was going, getting called up and I, I assumed I was going to AAA. Mm -hmm. And when he told me I was going to big leagues, I, I really didn't believe it. I was in, in a state of shock mm -hmm. and uh, didn't sleep that night and called, you know, obviously <laughs> called my parents. They didn't believe it. And I, I just remember it being a, a whirlwind of emotions and uh, 
you know, the, 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 the key for me, as I always said, you know, you want to get there, but you want to stay. Yeah. And uh, my first couple of times, I was on that shuttle <laughs> back and forth until I could finally uh, get a few meaningful hits that kept me around for a little longer. So you walked in that locker room for the first time and saw your uniform hanging up. Was it butterflies? Yeah, it was butterflies, definitely. And especially with the team I came up with, the Atlanta Braves, uh, and their string of division titles. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Greg Maddox, Smoltz, Glavin, Chipper, Sheffield, all those guys were on that team and a very uh, superstar-laden <laughs> team for me, for me to come up and be a part of. So you had to walk in there hard when you looked around. Uh, I was in awe. <laughs> I, I, I think that's that's sometimes what affects young players when they come up. They, you know, they work their whole life and watch these guys on TV and next thing you're getting dressed next to them in lockers and it kind of takes you back for a minute. So I've heard all these stories about rookie treatment. Did you get rookie treatment from those vet vets? Yeah, I got rookie treatment. I was a, I was a bellboy for some of the older <laughs> veterans. I, you know, I was a flight attendant on some of the plane flights. Uh, I was dressed up. Uh, I didn't care. Man. <laughs> I did anything. Oh, well, you were there. <laughs> well, the coach visited with Mark DeRosa. All the youngsters out there, he's giving you some insights of what it's like to be in the big leagues.